Hey everyone, welcome to another new series I'm starting for the channel. Just like the design patterns video, this is going to be a series where in each video we're going to showcase a different data structure in TypeScript. In today's video we're going to talk about linked lists. So for this uh, video I made a small TypeScript project uh, with TS Node installed, TypeScript installed. I'm not using any other libraries or packages. A linked list is a very common data structure used in computer science. It's a way to store elements in a sequential order. Linked lists are typically used when we need extremely fast insertion times. So if you're familiar with big O time complexity, a linked list can be inserted in constant time, which is extremely fast. You can use linked lists to construct other data structures too, such as stacks or queues. There are scenarios where you don't want to use a linked list though, like linked lists aren't good for randomly accessing elements. So in those kind of scenarios, you would want to use an array. In this video, we're going to go through how to create a linked list in TypeScript, and we'll implement a bunch of utility functions such as insert and find and print. If this is your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, let's start with our implementation. So we have two classes here, list node and linked list. Let's start with the list node. So a list node typically has two attributes. It has the data that we're storing, which in our case is a number, but it could be anything. And then we have a attribute called next, which points to either another list node or it's null. Pretty simple. Let's also create our constructor. Our constructor takes in data and it sets that data. And we also want our constructor to instantiate next to null. Perfect. Now let's make our linked list. Our linked list class for now is going to be very simple. All it has is a head. And this can be either a list node or it can be null. And we also need a constructor. This dot head equals head. Perfect. So this is the foundation of a linked list. It's very simple. A linked list is essentially just chained together elements. That's why they're linked. So we have a head and that head has data in it. And then it points to next, which is either a, another link in the list or it's the end of the list. So it's null. pretty straightforward. Let's make a basic linked list. So we have a node, we'll call it node one, and let's give it a value of five. And then let's copy this and paste it a couple times and do node two. We'll make this one 25 and node three. And let's make this one 30. So we have our three list nodes. Now let's chain them together. So node one dot next is equal to node two. And then we also want node2.next is equal to node3. And now that we have our nodes chained together, let's actually create the linked list. So let's create a new variable called linked list that creates a new linked list with node1 as the head. Awesome. Let's log this out and see what we get. Awesome. So we have our linked list object. It has a head, which as we know, it's a list node containing the value of five. Then it also has a pointer to our next list node, which is another object with data of 25. And this chains on and on and can be, you know, as many elements as you need. Now that we have our basic example, let's build some utility functions for our list. We're going to start with print. So let's create a function, a public function called print, and it's not going to have any return type. It's going to be void. We're going to set temp equal to this dot head, the first element in our list. And now we're going to loop while temp does not equal null. We're going to log out the data in temp. And then we are going, oops, we're going to set temp equal to temp.next. 
So what this is doing, we're printing the data that is in our list node, and then we're setting our temporary variable, variable to the next chain in the list. So pretty straightforward. Let's see what this looks like. So let's replace this console log with linked list dot print. All right, let's see what happens here. Awesome. So it did exactly what we expected it to. It printed the data in the first node, moved to the second node, printed that, moved to the third node and printed that. All right, so we have our print function and this can be repurposed into a size function or an insert function. So for size, all we have to do is count while we loop through and then return the count. Let's try it now. Let's create a new function called length and this time we'll return a number. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did last time. Set temp equal to this dot head and then we're gonna set a new variable called size and set it equal to zero. And then while temp does not equal null, we are going to increment size using size plus plus. And then temp is equal to temp.next. And then at the end of our loop, when we're done, we're going to return the size. All right, let's give it a test. So down here, let's go console.log linked list dot length. Awesome. So we know there's three nodes in our list and it returned three. Well, now let's test this. Let's create a new node called node four and let's set it equal to 40. And then let's also set node three dot node three dot next equal to node four. Now let's see what we get. Awesome. So we know it's working. We're going to use this exact same concept to push to the end of a linked list. All right, so we're going to create a new function for insert. And this is going to insert at the end of the list. So this insertion is going to be called push node. It's going to take in a data. And then it doesn't return anything. And we got to start simple. So if this dot head is equal to null. We're going to set this dot head is equal to a new list node with data. And now we have an else statement. Else, we're going to set temp equal to head, just like our last example. While temp dot next does not equal null. Temp is equal to temp dot next. And then temp dot next is equal to a new list node with data. So this checks and makes sure our list has any elements in it. So if it doesn't, then it sets the head, the first node. And if it does, it loops through those elements and then sets it to the last element. So now we can actually get rid of all this node one, node two thing. Let's do it simple. Let's delete all this, all this stuff. We have our linked list. Actually, let's leave the first node. Let node one equal new list node five. Awesome. Now we will set linked list dot push node 10. Linked list dot push node 15. Linked list dot push node 20. So now we have a new list with four elements in it. Let's run this, see if we still have four. We do. And now let's also print it. So we go linked list.print. Awesome. So we now have our new list. This is a much better way to deal with um, inserting into a node than the previous way. The previous way is a little cumbersome. So having our insert function here makes it a lot easier. All right, let's also make a fast insertion function. 
So this function inserts to the front of the list in constant time. Let's call this one insert head. And it's going to take in a number and it has a void return type. So we're going to create a new node called node with new list node data. And then we're going to set temp equal to head. And then we're going to set this dot head equal to the node. And then we're going to set head dot next equal to temp. So this might have sounded a little confusing, but basically what we're doing is we're creating a node. We're taking the old head and storing it in a temporary variable. We're then taking our new node and making that the head. And then we're setting the node next to head, the previous head. So now this is node one, this one is node two. Whereas previously this was node one. So this function, insert head, is extremely useful for implementing a stack using a linked list. And it's an extremely fast operation, so it's good for scenarios where you need strong performance. Now let's do a test and insert a value. So we'll keep our print there. We'll come down here and do linked list dot insert head. Let's insert 38. And now we'll print our list and see what happens. Awesome. So 38 is now at the front of our list. All right, so the last function we're going to write today is a find function. This function is going to take in a number as a parameter, and we will return true if it's in the list, false otherwise. So let's do that now. We're going to take in a number called value, and this list returns a Boolean. Let's set temp equal to this dot head while temp does not equal null, we are going to check if the data in temp is equal to the value. If it is, we're going to return true. If not, we're going to go temp is equal to temp.next. And then if we get through the whole loop without finding anything, we return false. Pretty straightforward. Now, I'm sure you've recognized now that there's kind of a pattern in all of our uh, functions here. Basically, since linked lists link each element together, we're always able to find the next one. So we're able to insert that way, we're able to find the size that way, we're able to uh, search that way. And all of these would have a uh, big O time complexity of n, where n is the number of elements in the list. All right, now let's take this find function and test it. Console.log is 24 in the list. Link list dot find 24. Now let's do one we know is in the list. Is 15 in the list. Link list dot find 15. All right, let's see. So we know 24 is not in the list, that's false. 15 is in the list, so it returns true. Awesome. All right, well that was our introduction to linked lists. I hope some of you found it informative and useful. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are any data structures you'd like to see covered next. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope everyone has a great day.